I'm Sergeant First Class Mark Thompson. I love being a soldier. Mark Thompson dreamed of becoming a soldier since he was five years old. Young, healthy, and extremely motivated, Mark achieved his dream and moved through the ranks quickly. He loved the camaraderie, the diversity, even the rules. But his life as a soldier was threatened when he was hit with diabetes. They told me, because of this medical condition, we're pretty sure that you're going to get kicked out of the Army. And I no longer had a choice, and I volunteered to serve my country. And now they're saying, you have to get out. At the time, Mark knew nothing about diabetes. But with his career and lifelong ambition on the line, he knew he needed to learn, and fast. So I delved into research and found that so long as I proved them that I could still be a soldier, so long as I kept my blood sugars at the appropriate level and not be a, a medical risk, then I could stay in and continue to serve. Mark proved this was a fight he was going to win. With constant testing and the help of an insulin pump, he brought his A1C down to six, where it has stayed consistently. He was allowed to keep serving. But life as a soldier would not be the same. When I was diagnosed, I was in the combat arms field. I was a Bradley commander on the forward front lines of the battlefield. As a diabetic, I couldn't do it. So by changing my specialty to become a career counselor, I knew that I was actually going to be able to stay in. All right, this morning, we're going to talk about eligibility. He was out of the line of fire, but being a soldier is still more of a risk when you have diabetes. When he tells us what the potential hazards of him going into a, a diabetes coma or something like that, it, it scares us. I, I know at one time we were training soldiers out in the field, and he, he just became like real hyper and stuff like that. Uh, and then he told us, hey, look, I, I, I need to eat. And that was when me and the other instructors just stopped him, and we've gotten some to eat. So it's a little bit scary at times, but I, I think we're all prepared for it. We, you know, we, we watch out for him, but usually he takes care of himself. Oh. Concern over Mark's diabetes led the Army to decide he should not go to Iraq when his unit was deployed. But Mark had other intentions. If the command had told me that they needed my expertise in the rear, then I would have been able to accept it. But instead, they told me that it was diabetes was the reason, and that to me became a battle to win. So online, they had a message board where I was able to communicate with other diabetics, post questions. What would I do with diabetes in a very hot environment, in a sandy environment? So I went to uh, the top medical officer and laid out everything, what diabetes meant, what complications were going to arise in a deployed environment, and all of my backups to counteract those complications. Mark convinced the Army that he was healthy enough to be deployed, but his wife wasn't so sure. She was concerned about him being in a war zone with diabetes. I felt angry that they could possibly send um, someone with his condition into those conditions. I didn't think they understood that, that it was such a serious thing. I needed to prove something to myself that diabetes was not going to stop me from being who I want to be. I deployed on a temporary status. Uh, my sergeant major was given the, the right to send me home at any given moment if he thought that my diabetes was going to be a problem. Mark's preparations and backup plans faced a big challenge soon after he arrived in Iraq. His insulin pump broke. The weight of the body armor that we had to wear uh, with water, plus the, the rounds that you can carry for your M16, approximately 55 to 60 pounds total. Actually crushed it. It was just a bad day, because I had the concern of maybe everybody was right, maybe I couldn't deploy. Heavy fighting at the time delayed mail delivery, so Mark had to wait more than a month before his new pump arrived. He had to switch back to needles. That was a scary event, because I hadn't been on needles for five years. And I unfortunately didn't have enough needles with me. So I went to the medics, and they gave me regular needles. Every shot hurt. At one point, I gave myself 14 shots in one day uh, just to make sure that my blood sugar was controlled. The emotional turbulence of war also challenged Mark's diabetes management. A lot of the situations we had were stressful. A lot of it was from seeing things that you don't ever want to see. Long periods of being on watch of waiting for that worst moment to happen and having it not ever happen initially will increase the blood sugar and then it'll bring it down for me. There's a lot of sleep deprivation, 
uh, having the heightened awareness for potential roadside bombs, uh, looking for potential threats. Your brain is just so focused that you don't have the opportunity to realize what your body's going through as a diabetic. So I definitely couldn't tell when my highs were because there were some frustrating moments over there. There were some seriously emotional moments over there to where I had no clue what my sugar was. So I was checking my blood sugar a lot in Iraq, but I needed to in order to make sure that I wasn't going to be a casualty of diabetes to where I was going to take somebody else out of the fight. I did not ever want to give up and quit and go home because if I did, I would have felt like the diabetes would have won. And that was a goal that I had, not only to prove to myself that I could still be a soldier as a diabetic, but also I felt that I would let my family down if I was not able to be 100%. And not only did I make it to full 12 months, but I was also given the Bronze Star for what I did there. When I retire from the Army, I do plan on going into the medical field. Uh, I've been, I have wanted to be a nurse for a long time as a stepping stone now into certified diabetes educator. What's gonna happen? One of the things I would like to do for the rest of my life is to educate others that diabetes is not something that will stop them from doing anything. How they control it, how they deal with the disease, that will be the determining factor and I would like for the rest of the world to see it the same way.